So I have been asked to give an update on the current status of the affordable housing market study that was commissioned last year and completed in March of 2021. So I'm just gonna run through some findings quickly of that study and then kind of give the council and the audience an update of where we're at. So you'll recall some of these, those that have been on the council have seen these diagrams before, but uh, that the study found that there is a lack of uh, supply of affordable housing in the community. And this graph before you shows the total housing units by type for Sheboygan County. So the red shows single family, the blue is multifamily. At the bottom of the chart, it's from 1990 to 2018. And you can see that after we came out of the recession in about 2010, um, we've never uh, really recapped or, or gained momentum from where we were in the 90s and the early 2000s on housing. And that's part of the reason why this community and this county as a whole is seeing a housing uh, shortage right now is because um, the numbers d uh, dipped off substantially after the 2007 to 2010 recession, but have never really regained, even though we've developed a lot of apartments since 2015. Um, our multifamily numbers are nowhere near where we were in the 90s. Likewise, when we look at the rental unit vacancy in this chart, the um, area, uh, the green uh, bar is the city of Sheboygan at 3.3% uh, uh, vacancy. The typical vacancy rate for uh, a good supply and demand is between 5 and 7%. Um, the city of Plymouth, the second bar is 6.4%. Uh, Sheboygan Falls is 0 uh, percent village of Kohler zero percent and the county as a whole is 2.9 percent and this is data as of December 31st of 2020 so there's definitely demand for additional housing uh, this just shows the units that um, the consultant in the study sh came up with so in uh, uh, additional rental units the market can support between uh, 400 and a thousand um, just to let you know, there's been 949 apartments built since 2015 to the current time frame. So we, according to this study, need at least another thousand, so double uh, that. You can see, based on the rent rates, um, 184 to 471 units at $918 a month, and it goes up to $1,284 uh, a month. Under the under it, the owner-occupied units, we need roughly another thousand single-family um, housing units in the range of 129,000 up to 234,000. But as you'll find out as we go through this, it's very difficult with today's construction costs to try to build a house for 234,000. Um, on the top right, the single independent living, another thousand subsidized, 284. Uh, market rate, and then senior assisted living at roughly 200 units by 2030. So the study had a number of recommendations under capacity and building communications, initiatives, regulations, and partnerships. Uh, the first category was establishing a housing committee, providing housing for all, um, continuing the developer summit. Uh, the second under initiatives was to assist and grow neighborhood associations, purchase and market city-owned redevelopment properties, develop master plans, and uh, create a tenant resource center. Under regulation, allow for multifamily units as permitted use, reduce setbacks, create a new residential district, continue the code enforcement program, and continue flexibility on infrastructure requirements. And under partnerships was to work with groups like Habitat, Partners for Community Development, and other groups as well as landlord training and working with major employers. So as we break that down a little bit, this is where it'll get into more detail on what's going on and what's in the works. So under the capacity building, um, one of them was to build, to establish a housing committee. Uh, since there is already the Sheboygan Housing Coalition, which is made up of about 57 organizations um, across the city and the county, it was decided not to create another uh, committee, but to create a subcommittee of that Group. So there's an affordable housing committee that has um, met the Partners for Community Development staff leads that. Um, so there's, they're meeting every couple months and talking about affordable housing needs in the community. 
uh, provide housing for all. You'll see as we go through these slides, there's a number of projects in the pipeline for young professionals, individuals, veterans, and seniors under the affordable housing uh, multifamily units. Uh, network at WIDA events and then continue the developer summit um, and the 2022 developer summit that we've done for a number of years which has generated a lot of the development we see today is scheduled for October 6th of this year. Um, under the initiatives we continue to assist and grow neighborhood associations and attending meetings and neighborhood meetings and town hall events and then we did a citywide study of all vacant city owned properties um, and exploring a number of vacant sites to create some additional housing. And then the recent purchase of the former Jacob Hall on North 15th Street is part of this plan. Under the regulation, we've talked about this in the past about allowing multifamily units as permitted use and reducing uh, setbacks. Um, we believe at the current time that there's uh, minimal change that's needed to the zoning ordinance to facilitate development. Um, continuing the code enforcement program is ongoing and flexibility on infrastructure requirements. This is the idea of trying to narrow down and, and not make it so expensive for single family subdivisions to be built um, and changing the city's standard spec for the road design. Um, under the partnerships, uh, form working groups with employers and the EDC has done that in a recent announcement related to the forward fund where the private entities have put money into a fund for single family housing. Uh, continuing the landlord education program, we've done two sessions in partnership with the police department in the spring and fall for the last few years and have that scheduled again for this year. Um, and then support Habitat for Humanity, Partners for Community Development and other uh, uh, groups and we do that through the Community Development Block Grant dollars. So just looking at the current status of the number of projects that have come before you during a number of different meetings, the Commonwealth development that's planned at the corner of 14th and Indiana was the first affordable housing project. It's 48 units. Um, $12 million construction. It applied for WIDA low-income tax credits, and it's the only project in the city that was awarded tax credits, so this project will be moving forward later this year. Um, the city would also be under the plan providing some American Rescue Plan Act funds to help with the uh, construction cost differentials. The second project is a Partners for Community Development project, and that's this is on the corner of 13th and, sorry, 13th and Erie, uh, east of the Burger King. Um, that project will be applying for WIDA tax credits um, and also some city funds and some state funds under some grant programs. This is 44 units dedicated to families, individuals, and veterans. And then the last project is on some redevelopment authority owned land, the former capsule property on the river west of Pacifico. Um, General Capital is proposing a number of buildings um, including affordable live work units and then uh, 55 and older units up to 100 uh, units. This was a $26 million project. It applied for WIDA tax credits and they did not get an allocation. So they are in the per process of rerunning their numbers to see if there's an opportunity to still move this project forward. Um, and the project would present opportunities hopefully for older, uh, the older population that are living in their homes to give them more of a um, opportunity for moving out of their home and opening up some housing stock in our neighborhoods. One of the other uh, study recommendations is to purchase in market city owned redevelopment properties. Uh, so this is the uh, former, former Jacob Hall on North 15th across from fire station number three. Um, so the city is right now working to uh, complete lead and asbestos removal and Bernie has bids for demolition. So they it will be moving to demolish that entire uh, property. It, opens up an opportunity for about one and a half acres of redevelopment. Um, we heard from a speaker a couple of weeks ago that was talking about pocket neighborhoods and more densely platted neighborhoods and I think this is a location where that could potentially happen and I think frankly this is a location where if there's local developers that want to try developing in the community that we would be willing to work with them on uh, developing a smaller infill site. So this is an opportunity for uh, different people. We have not decided what, how we're gonna seek developers on this 
uh, property at this stage, but once we do, I think there's an opportunity. Then the last uh, piece of this was the purchase of the Gartman Farm on the south side of Sheboygan for affordable single family, uh, middle range uh, housing and potentially some senior. Um, so we've, this has proven to be a little bit more difficult than what we had anticipated. So we had hoped to line ourselves up with a developer and a consultant and have a developer that would be willing to come in and help us lay out the land and move forward with a plan. Well, th there's, a, there's not a lot of housing developers in this county and in the surrounding counties, they don't have the uh, manpower to be able to come here and take on a project besides the other project they're working on. So we're, st we're still in the research mode as to how this would happen. Um, but I can tell you that Bob Warner, who is developing another subdivision on the south side, uh, said last week that a 1,400-square-foot home in today's construction costs with land is about $320,000. And two years ago, this, that same cost of the house was $250,000. So we're d up against that, and we're up against rising interest rates. So we have some challenges ahead of us that we need to work through, but we will uh, do what we can or at least wait till um, stuff stabilizes a little bit more in the construction trades. So this was the property um, of the Gartman Farm on the south side. Um, it, it is adjacent to the Polth Farm that the city has owned for a number of years and would be part of that development. Shifting gears a little bit in 2020, we uh, rolled out a new program that was an affordable housing funded program called the Upper Floor Residential Rehab Program. And the point of this was to take vacant second floors of buildings and convert them into affordable housing units. Um, so since 2020, we've crea created 13 affordable units. The city has invested about 242,000 in grant funds. Um, that have been leveraged against owner investment of about 477,000 for a total of about $719,000. Um, this is the reach forward on South A Street, um, former Dulmas Decor building. The upstairs was uh, completely renovated into a very nice um, apartment and they took advantage of this program. The last program that I just want to highlight is the uh, continuation of the city's housing rehabilitation program to improve affordable housing units across the city. Um, over the past five to seven years, on average, we've done five to eight projects a year. Since we've launched an online application process through Neighborly, um, in 2021, we've seen 45 applications, of which 15 are in the construction phase. Um, 11 applications are still in process. 15 were incomplete or withdrawn and four were denied. To date, we've expended about $208,000 of federal money um, on low interest loans for single family and multifamily units. And this resource is always there as an opportunity for low to moderate income folks within the community. The last piece I just wanna highlight is the other suggestions in the study were to work with employers to create a public private housing fund, the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation um, and local companies um, have developed an $8 million commitment to help provide funding for affordable housing called the Forward Fund. Um, we believe the Forward Fund may be an option to help with the Gartman property once we get to that point. Um, and then the last point of this was to expand the city's affordable housing fund um, to be, provide an opportunity for additional uh, expenses and creative kind of financing to fill gaps. So that was expanded by the recent approval of the, by the council of six TID districts that are closing and extending them one year. Uh, there's about $5 million that would be rolling into that uh, fund. And under the five-year capital improvements plan, um, it outlines the fund of the use of those funds to offset utility costs for developing uh, affordable housing. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm sorry it went pretty fast, but if anybody has any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Otherwise, we continue to work through it. But as we've said over and over, it's not super easy to build affordable housing because of the current construction costs and uh, working through that piece. So I think it's about uh, continuing to be creative in how we can make accomplishments.